Good evening, everybody. A little rev. We're broadcasting from our kitchen in Sheboygan, Wisconsin on this uh, snowy day. Yep, we had snow today. I couldn't believe it. Off and on, we had snow today. Man. <laughs> Anyways, uh, um, Wisconsin. Anyways, we are going to be studying um, damping, muting, and chunking techniques for oh, about an hour, plus or minus, a little bit. We'll see how long it takes us to get through the material. And uh, so I want to welcome all of you from afar, from Canada and Florida and California and Chicago and Evanston and all over the place. Um, we love to hear from you. My wife, Jenna, is uh, the engineer tonight, and so she will be making notes if you um, – have questions you feel free to pop pop them off in the thread and um if i can't answer it as pertinent to where we're at i will otherwise we'll save a few minutes towards the end for questions as always and um there's a lot of great stuff here tonight it's an over you know it's a subject matter that is often overlooked and and yet it's such a powerful aspect of this instrument the muting damping and uh, percussive effects of the ukulele. Well, let's be honest, the, the ukulele as a soprano in its historical context, when brought to Hawaii by the Portuguese, um, was just this lovely little infectious little box of rhythm. And for that reason alone, the, um, the love and allure of this instrument took off and it became the national instrument of Hawaii and the adopted um, you know, trademark musically uh, of the islands. And so uh, we're going to tap into that tonight. And I'm going to give you just a little bit of a take on this. And uh, um, I hope you all are ready. If you do not have the music, um, you can uh, access it. It, should, it was posted on the Mead site as well as uh, on the Sheboygan Ukulele Club site. But the fastest way to get this music for this series of classes is just to go to lilrev.com, scroll down. You will see a, a little box that says Sheboygan Ukulele Club. Click on that box and it'll take you to our Google Drive. And that's where we'll have all the music posted for these classes as well. So that's probably the fastest way to get to it if you can't find it. Uh, on Sheboygan Ukulele Club or on Mead, um, you can get it through my website, lilrev.com, okay? I think we're ready to begin the class now. Enough of you are kind of um, uh, giving us your thread, letting us know you're ready to go. So um, here we go, okay? You will note over my uh, shoulder the uh, my attempt to make my living from, from my kitchen now. And, uh, um, and so... When I'm out on the road, typically these workshops are 20, 30 bucks a head for a 90 minute class. If you enjoyed what you learned tonight, you really got something out of it. Um, your tips are very much appreciated. And we will post this on my Facebook page as well. And so I, we thank you and let's begin the class now. Here we go. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna do is um, talk about what damping and muting is. Well. Anytime you put your hands down on the strings, you are going to dampen the sound, okay? Now, this can be done while you're actually making a chord or a note. So, in other words, we can play, melodically, we can play dampen. Right? If I didn't dampen it, it would have been much brighter. We can also dampen or mute the sound of our chords, like when we're doing reggae or calypso. As we lift off the chords, we'll be doing some muting. But there's much more than that. There's this percussive sound that happens. Hear that? Right, so that that chunky type of sound is yet another aspect uh, of damping and muting. So there's all these different avenues by which we can do this. Uh, 
it's very helpful when you are playing music, for example, if you don't know where you are. And, you know, if you lose your spot, if you're looking at a lead sheet and you lose your spot, if you're at a jam and you don't have the music and you're learning a three or four chord song on the spot and you just don't know where you are, I tell this to my students and the U Club all the time. Get used to just going to the damp and the mute as, a, as your go-to. So if I'm playing a chord progression and I don't know the song, and there's another chord in there, let's say it's supposed to be D, D7, then I haven't learned that one yet. So anytime you're not sure what to do, your go-to immediately, instinctively, should be to go to that damping or muting. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, it's a way to keep the rhythm going and not lose your place in the jam, in the circle, in your club, uh, or on stage. What if you're performing at an open mic and you forget where you're at? You know, you decide not to take the lyric sheets up with you. Well, then smile and get to damping and muting, and that can buy you a little bit of time. Okay, so these are some of the reasons why we do this, certainly not all of them, okay? We're gonna start with our first warm up now tonight. And just to get those of you who have never done this, I'm looking at the names popping up and some of you have taken this class with me before. So, uh, but those of you who have not, I wanna get you into the feel of what it is to mute the strings. First of all, when you place your hands on the strings to just cover them up, you're not pressing all the way down. You're just lightly, putting enough pressure on so that it, it it dampens out the song, right? If you press too hard, you're actually gonna hear a tone, okay? So you just very lightly, that's all you gotta do, okay? So just try this, okay? Now let's do an echo effect, where I do a couple strokes and you do a couple strokes back at me, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna dampen the strings, and I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. You try it. Okay, good. Now I'm going to do it again. Again, this is this is very basic. One, two, three, four. You do it. Okay, good. All right, now now let's add a chord and build it up now a little bit. Okay, I'm going to make a C chord, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a C chord, mute the strings. A C chord, mute the strings. So that's down, mute, down mute. All right, I'm going to do it, then I want you to try right after me. Okay, so here we go. Now you try. Down, mute, down, mute, down, mute, down, mute. Good, that's it. Okay, one more time. I do it, you do it. Listen. effective. If you get used to muting in between chords, it adds a whole nother layer of uh, another dynamic to your arrangements. So a little bit later on in the class, we're going to sing Folsom Prison. Okay. However, if you watch this now, I'm going to do a little bit of Folsom Prison, then I'm going to go into muting. And I'll show you. If I was just kept strumming, it would just sound the same from beginning to end. But by starting to add the mute, it adds a whole nother percussive element to the song. So watch what I mean. I hear the train I'm coming, rolling around the band. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. Yes, I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. At the time he's dragging home. But that train keep rolling. On down to San Antonio. I was just a baby. So you get the idea that this percussive effect of just down, up, down, up, down, up is it's really it's based on your own rhythmic ability, my friends. So if you're a very beginning strummer, then creating percussive mojo in between the verses might seem harder than 
say the person who took up ukulele but is also an African drummer. If you have a good sense of rhythm, uh, then you can really take off with this. If you're just building your sense of rhythm, then it's something to aspire to, but it's not impossible, okay? I believe that all of you can do this, okay? So let's go back to this chord exercise now, and let's make a different chord now. Let's do a G chord, and I'm presuming you know your basic chords, okay? So do a G chord, and let's do down, down, mute, down, down, mute, down, down, mute, okay? Let's try that. We're building up a little bit more now. I do it, you do it. You try it. Down, down, mute. Down, down, mute. Down, down, mute. Down, down, mute. Okay, good. That's it. That's the idea. Now, when you have a chord progression that has a lot of different chords in it, um, you know, sometimes it might be kicking along in a manner that doesn't leave much room for adding those kind of percussive effects. Um, but the mute is good for all kinds of different things. So you can add a mute to create the kind of ambience that you want in a song. Now, I know some of you think, oh, little Rev, you're really stretching it here. But here's what I want you to think of. This is what I tell my students all the time. Is it possible to use muting to create the kind of effect you want that is synonymous with the lyrics in your song. What do I mean by that? Okay. If you, for example, if you are strumming a train song, you could make your ukulele sound like a train percussively. If you have a patriotic song, you could make your ukulele sound like a march. Um, if you want to create, um, you know, if you're playing, we will, we will rock you. You can kind of imitate what the drums would do as well. So there's all these different things that this is going to be good for. And now what I'd like to ask you to do is open up the packet. And I'd like you to look at the sheet if you have it in front of you. If you don't, don't sweat. This next song is just two chords. It's F and C7. And we're going to do skip to my loo. Now, this isn't anything that sounds stellar or is going to make give you oohs and ahs. But it is going to ease you into adding a, per, uh, a mute while you're playing a song. Okay? And so this is kind of like a nursery rhyme practically. Um, so we're going to do skip to my loo. It's F and C7. Now, what I'd like to ask you to do on page two is that we're going to strum and sing skip to my loo. But whenever you would, you're supposed to go to C7, that's where we're going to mute and just keep singing. Okay? What this is going to teach you to do is eventually be able to go to a muted or dampening sound a little with a little more um, authority uh, when you really want to do this. But also, you could damp or mute when you're singing just for more percussive effect too. Okay, so here, here's what it's going to sound like. Watch me. Skip, skip, skip to my loo. Skip, skip. Skip to my loo, skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip to my loo, my darling. So where I would be going to a C seventh in this two chord song is where I'm going to mute or damp the strings. Okay, is everybody clear on that? Okay, so try this with me now. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. Skip, skip, skip to my loo, damp. Skip, skip, skip to my loo, strum. Skip. Skip, skip to my loo, damp, skip to my loo, my dar. Do it again. Skip, skip, skip to my loo, damp, skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip to my loo, my dar. Do it again now. Skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip to my loo, my dar. One more time. Time now, you're doing great. Here we go now. And skip, skip, skip to my loo, damp, skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip to my loo, my darling. Okay, that was really good. 
So you just proved that you could do a song and add the damp and the muting in there as well. Now, one of the things you're going to discover tonight, especially when we get to the Rock Island line and a few other things that we're going to do, is that where you move your hand on the fretboard to dampen changes the feel. And this, there's no tonality to it. You're not making a chord or a note, but you'll notice as you move your hand around that it changes the overall feel. So if I'm way up the neck, sounds different than if I went up here where it's a little lower. So one thing, another thing I want you to keep in mind as you become more proficient at damping is that I want you to think about moving your hand around a little bit here and there as you're doing this. Is it okay to just leave it in one spot? Yeah. And for some people, that's all they can do to just keep this going. For those more proficient, and you can think about moving that hand around, it's like patting your head and rubbing your tummy, right? It's, uh, uh, you know, this is better than crossword puzzles for the brain. Okay, this is what they're talking about when they say take up a musical instrument in your 60s, right? And so all these different things that we're going to get ourselves doing, it's really just uh, beautiful and fun for your body, okay? So let's turn the page now and let's go away from skip to my loo. I think that gave you all a pretty good sense of adding a mute to, um, to a song. Now we're going to be looking at a Rock Island line, okay? When this class is 90 minutes, then there are some other pages that get added to this. But tonight it's an hour, and so we bypass what normally would have been page three in my little handout. And uh, now we find ourselves on Rock Island Line. If you do not have the handout, your chords in this song are going to be G, going to a D seventh, G, going to a C, okay, and then a little quick D seventh at the end back to G. So you got G, C, and D7. If you don't have the hand out in front of you, it's still going to be, you're still going to get a lot out of this, okay? So what this next uh, piece illustrates is what I was talking about earlier, how the, the mute can add a um, ambient to your song. It can be an introduction to your song. It could be an ending to your song. By learning to take advantage of the mute, to create what you're talking about in the song lyrically, poetically, thematically, um, you are learning to dress up your song in a way that could be a showstopper for you, okay? Um, some of you have seen me do a, um, Grandfather's Clock where I take the ukulele and I do a pendulum and I strike the strings and I flip it out and it's really cool and it brings down the house every time I do it, okay? This isn't quite up there like that, but it, if people go, ooh, oh, that's cool. How'd they do that? Okay. And they just simply did it by muting or damping the strings. And we're going to try that right now. Okay. So to make the train sound, you could use this for any song that uh, you do in your repertoire that, has, that is about a train. Folsom Prison, uh, The Midnight Special, the Chattanooga Choo Choo, even the folksy stuff uh, like the Wabash Cannonball or the Wreck of the Old 97. All you, uh, you know, people like, uh, you know, Johnny Cash singing the Orange Blossom special. Any song that is about a train, you could add this to uh, to give it a, uh, a really cool introduction or even an ending. So let me play with this for you so you can hear what it sounds like, okay? The only part of what I'm going to do that I'm not going to teach you tonight is the triple strum that comes at the end of my demo. That's a whole nother class, okay? Um, but I'll show you what happens by damping and muting and making it sound like a train, okay? And the added effect of what you learn from doing this, um, you're gonna gain some other skills that are a sort of an after effect, okay? So watch. <laughs> make it sound like a train. So if you start out real slow, you can 
get it to sound like a train taking off. And then once I get going real fast, what am I doing? Once I get going real fast, I'm practicing tremolo. And tremolo is just using one finger down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up on the string. So if you practice this, you're also getting good at your tremolo once you get going really fast. So you get an added bonus out of doing this in addition to coming up with this cool train effect. Okay, and everybody's got one song in their repertoire that has something to do with a train or mentions a train. It's just as American as apple pie. Okay, so I didn't do the triplets. So let me give you the fancy version now, and then we're going to try this together. Okay, so hold tight. train gets going fast, you got to bring it into the station. And then right at the end, you go. So you could do that and then go into your song, or you could do it at the end of a song and go, go out of the song. How would that work with the song we're, we're going to do, the, uh, the Rock Island Line? This would also work with Folsom Prison, too, as I said earlier, but it might sound like this. Four. Hear the train a coming, rolling around the bend, or rock out the line is a mighty good road. Rock out the line is a road where you just give yourself one maybe quarter rest, take a breath, go, you know, do take a quarter rest, and then go into the song. Okay, it serves as a nice intro. Okay, or an outro at the end of the song. Okay, either way is going to work. So let's try this together now. Here we go. Take your hands, cover up the strings. Take your strumming finger, that's the squirt gun shape, okay? And you're going to go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, while muting. Hey, all you beginners out there, this act of just muting and going down, up, guess what else? It's teaching you to do what those of us who are teachers want you to do. Get comfortable with your down, up, down, up strumming hand. Okay, so this is also good for that. Try this with me, everybody. See if you can move your hand around a little bit while you're doing this. I'll keep the tempo the same for a minute or two. Okay, I won't change the tempo, but try to move your hand around a little bit. You hear how it changes? I'm not in all of your living rooms there. You know, I can't hear what you're doing, but I can imagine you're doing a good job. Okay, now you start to speed it up. See how many of you can hang with me now as I get faster. Everyone gets their crash and burn point when they're first starting this. In other words, how fast can you do it before it just gets to be chaos? Try to do tremolo once it gets too fast. And then slow it down again. Bring it into the station. And then two, three, four. Rock Island Line is a mighty good road. Rock Island Line is a road to ride. Rock Island Line is a mighty good road. Want to ride it, got to ride it like you find it. Get your ticket at the station. Up. Rock Island Line. Come on, strum it with me if you can. Here we go now. Jesus died. Jesus died to save our sin. Glory to God, we're going to meet him again. Oh, rock out of line is a mighty good road. Rock out of line is a road to ride. Rock out of line is a mighty good road. Want to ride, it, got to ride it like you find it. Get your ticket at the station. Oh, rock out of line. Well, I may be right and I may be wrong. No, you're going to miss me when I'm gone. The rock out of line is a mighty good walk. The rock out of line is a road to ride. The rock out of line is a mighty good road. Want to ride, 
got to got to ride a line to find a get a ticket at the station. I got a line. A B C. Now here we go. O L A B C double X Y Z. Can't see in the cover, but he can't see me. The rock got a line. It's a mighty good road. The rock got a line. It's a road to ride. The rock got a line. It's a mighty good road. Long to ride. It got to ride a line to find a get a ticket at the station. I rock got a line. So here you are, you're at an open mic, you just did your train song, and the song is about to end. What do you do? You use your muted outro, and you drop your hands down, you stop strumming, and you go right into it, okay? So watch. See, there was no break. You just went right into that outro. And then instead of getting faster, you just fade it out because the train is going off into the distance. And when you can do that seamlessly, it's also a sign that you're getting good at muting because you can go from strumming chords right into muting without breaking your rhythm. And then you go, Okay, good job, you guys. That was really good. So there's another example of how you can use muting and percussion to your advantage. And now I'm going to ask you to turn the page just like I am. And we're going to go to page five, in my little handout. And I'm going to give you one more example um, of how, how muting and damping can create a, a real ambient effect uh, with patriotic songs. So... Um, Type into your thread some patriotic songs that, that you like to play. Like, like if you were going to play a patriotic song, what would it be? What would they be? A couple of you, just type in a, a couple of them. What comes to mind when I say patriotic songs? And, and I know some of you are thinking, well, Star Spangled Banner or You're a Grand Old Flag or anything like that. But it could be from any era. It doesn't have to be the ones from the 1800s. Um, you know, the what was that song about the Green Beret? Or, you know, there's all these different songs uh, over time that bring up patriotic feelings, right? So anytime you want to do a song that has a patriotic feeling, and say you're in a ukulele club and you get asked to play for the 4th of July, this would be very handy to create this kind of effect that I'm going to show you right now. You're a grand old flag, right? Somebody just typed that one in, okay? So we're looking at a song on page five called The Battle of New Orleans. And this is just another example of how you can add damping, muting. Those words I use interchangeably, okay? They're the same thing, okay? And so um, to, to create a damping or muting effect uh, and give it a, a, a march sound, yeah, Yankee Doodle Dandy, there's another one, right? Okay. Or how about from the Broadway era? I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy, right? You could do it. Anything that's patriotic, okay? So watch what happens. You can go. Here come the troops marking, marching down Main Street. Notice how I'm moving my hands around to give it a different sort of timber. Now, I can also, the more advanced players amongst you could also do this. You could mute, and you could do a roll stroke. Now, I just taught two classes on roll strokes. And if you tuned in, this would be an example of how you could practice your roll strokes. Okay, watch. Same thing. Even if I don't move my hand, it still sounds good. So think about this now for a moment, my friends. Um, so we are so locked into the idea that everything we have to do with this instrument has got to be chordal or it's got to be uh, single string melodic 
right? And we're so locked into that our, that we got to be actually doing something by pressing down, you know, and, and, and intonating that we've lost sight of the idea that this little box is like a little drum. And so as we start to incorporate the nuances of damping and muting and later what we'll talk about tonight, chunking, um, we start to arrive at this place where this instrument is just, you know, it's a toe tapper. You know, it's going to get people moving and grooving as you start to incorporate these sort of things into your playing. And a little bit goes a long, long way. So don't feel like you got to master everything I'm saying tonight. Okay. Remember, this will be archived and you can follow up and watch it again. In fact, some of you who live in rural areas are not going to get very good reception and you'll, you might get a better viewing um, if you follow up and watch it at, at another time too. Okay. So. How did I do that again now? How did I get that march sound? Okay. I just muted the strings wherever I want to start. And I went down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up. Try it on your own. Down, 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 up, down. Good. Okay. Awesome. That's it. Okay. Now, again, one last time, if you want to do roll stroke, you'd go. So roll stroke, strike, down, up, down. Roll stroke, strike, down, up, down. Roll stroke strike, down, up, down. Roll stroke strike, down, up, down. Okay? And that's going to give you that. Here they come marching down the street. So let me demonstrate how this would sound with a song. I'm going to sing the first verse of the Battle of New Orleans. And then I'm going to just kind of, well, I'm going to sing the chorus. We fired our guns. And then I'll go right into this and you can see how this would work. Okay? So watch me now. You're more than welcome to strum along with me, okay? Eighteen fourteen, we took a little trip. Long with Colonel Jackson down the mighty Mississippi. Took a lot of bacon and we took a lot of beans. Fought the bloody British in the town of New Orleans. Fired our guns and the British kept a coming. One night many as it was a while ago. Fired once more and they began to run it. Down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, here they come right now. Main Street Sheboygan. Oh, thank you to those who've served. A lot of veterans in my family. And then you'd go right back into it. So get ready, here we go. Look down the river and we see the British call. Must have been a hundred of them banging on the drum. Stepped so high and they made the bugles ring. Stood beside a cotton field, didn't say a thing. Fired our guns and the British kept a coming. One night, many years it was a while ago. Fired once more and they began to run it. Down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico. Did you see how I muted while I was singing? Sometimes it's nice to just give the court a break. Here they come. Right down your main street. Or with the roll stroke. you'd go on to the next verse which if, if um in the packet there let's see here i believe it goes on to that second page so um old hickory said we could take him by surprise we didn't fire muskets looked him in the eyes held our rifles and on and on so you could keep going with that song and then add it throughout and i guarantee you okay i guarantee you that that your audience would just love that and and, and would add a whole new dimension to your delivery of a patriotic song 
doesn't have to be, um, you know, that 1958 Johnny Horton classic, The Battle of New Orleans. It could be any song. So let's go on now um, because the time goes by so fast well, with these classes. And so um, now we're going to go to uh, a concept called chunking. Now, when it comes to damping and muting, this is a concept that seems to have more familiarity in the public uh, sphere of consciousness about this, this sort of technique. Everybody has heard the word chunking, but oftentimes folks aren't sure how to go about it. There are many ways to teach this and really is often, um, you know, related to what, how you want to use it in a song. Okay. I'm going to uh, simplify it a little bit tonight, try to demystify uh, a side of chunking that you can just start practicing this a little bit. So I want you to turn to page seven, Folsom Prison, if you have it in front of you. Otherwise, Folsom Prison is, uh, you know, it's in the, I think it's in the daily ukulele and there's a lot of other published places to find this song. Okay. Um, we're going to do it in G, so it's going to be G, C, and D7. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do a chunk on the two and the four beats, okay, which is kind of like a, a rock thing almost. So one and one, one and two, one and two and three and four. And that, that's something we can all feel because we grew up with rock and roll. So um, even though this song would sound better with just a straight boom chuck, We're going to do it with a two and four. Hear the train I come rolling around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine. I don't know when. Man, I'm stuck at Folsom Prison. Time be dragging on. So you can hear the, you can hear that sort of brushed part that is the chunk, okay? So I'm going one hand down up, and then I'm doing what is synonymous with chunking. The fleshy part of my, my thumb right here and the base of my palm is striking the lower bout of the strings right here. So I'm down up. And then I'm striking down up, and I'm saying one and two and three and and on the two and the four, that's where I'm going to strike the strings. And that brushing technique of this lower part of your hand and the thumb, lower part of the thumb, meaty part of the thumb, striking the strings dampens it out. Okay, and and I found through my students and a lot of experimentation. I watch a lot of people teach chunking, and it just can be very confusing, when, especially when the rhythm isn't a real straight rhythm that um, our minds and our ears have heard over and over again. And when it comes to rock and roll, we've all heard one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four. We can all feel that, okay? So while this is a country song, it would sound better with a boom chuck, um, it still works, okay? So let's try this again now. We're gonna make a G chord. We're gonna do a down up, and then we're gonna hit the strings. Down up. Now you might notice that the tip of your finger also strikes the strings, okay? So this is what I want you to echo me. I do it, you do it. I'm gonna strum down, but I'm gonna let my, my base of my palm and my thumb hit the strings. That's gonna create that chunking sound, okay? Okay, you try it. Down up chunk. 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 So if you're strumming a chord, down up. Hear that? You hear that sound? That's part of what is chunking. This can become very syncopated and it can have all kinds of different effects the more advanced you get at using this in different ways. 
this is just a very basic way to do it. Okay, so let's try it again. Okay, let's try to make a C chord this time. Down, up, down, up, down, up, strike. Let's do it as a call and response. That might be easier, okay? You do it. Down, up, chunk. Now, the first couple times you try this, if you've never done this before, you're going to miss the strings. It's, it's, you got to get used to that. Now, when I go down, oftentimes the tip of my finger or even the back of my nail will hit those strings too. And that helps to add that ch -ch -ch kind of effect. So I'll go down, up, down, up. Try it with me. Down, up, down, up. Down up, down up, down up, down up. Now, if you're really into your nails, you're going to look at your finger and you're going to see that brushing your finger up against those strings like that blackens it a little bit, you know, and darkens it a little bit. Um, so if you got a long nail there, that might be a little harder for you, okay? But try it again. This is one where repetition is king or queen, depending on your gender, okay? So here we go. Down up, down up, down up, down up. I'm going to try and change my angle a little bit. Maybe it'll help you to see it from a different perspective. And again, I'm going down up and then I'm striking. But when I strike, I'm brushing my nail, tip of my finger and the fleshy part of my thumb and the base of my palm all down on those strings and it stops them from ringing out, okay? So once a song gets going, I mean, it really gets percussive. You know, listen to this. That's why when you hear, you know, people like Victoria Box, right? like to write those great great songs that got that that good energy you'll hear that chunking in there okay now i don't expect you to be able to just keep that groove going like that tonight but you'll work towards it okay you work towards it and then eventually you'll be able to get to the point where you can go Hear the train a come and try with me, rolling around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since. I don't know when. Man, I'm stuck at for some prison. Time keep dragging home. Yeah, that train. down the sand and tone. I'm holding those a little longer. When I was just a baby, my mama told me, son, always be a good boy. Don't you ever play with God? But I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. Here we go. Right here, come on now. When I hear that whistle blowing, I hang my head and cry. I gave you a little bit longer on that last chord before we went into the D. Okay. Bet there's rich folks eat in a fancy dining car. Probably drinking coffee, smoking big cigar. Well, I know I had it coming. I know I can't be free. But those people keep a moving. Tortures 
Now you see what I'm doing with that chord right there? I'm slurring it, sliding it. That's going to be the basis of a whole hour class on April 16th. How to slur and how to slide, both chords and individual notes. But it all started just like this. Down, up, chunk. 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 Okay, so just practice in your home. That's striking. Brush the nail, and you could take one or two nails even. Brush the nail as it comes down. Let the fleshy part of the thumb strike those strings and the base of your palm. Now you got to do that over the fretboard. Okay, you cannot do that down here over the sound hole. It's got to be over the fretboard. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of a basis on chunking. And uh, a lot of times that's a great thing to do in between verses. In fact, if you listen to Johnny Cash play guitar, a lot of times you'll hear him go in between the verses. You'll hear that kind of a sound, okay? All right, so let's turn the page now. We're going to go on. And, um, and now we're going to talk about how the mute factors into um, different strumming patterns. Okay, now this is just another angle that I just want to make you aware of. Um, and I'm looking at page eight. So, for example, when you do a blues strum, which is a down, 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 up, down, which is also a swing strum too, um, you will get this kind of effect. I'm going to bar on the third fret, and I'm going to make a seven. Some of you know it as a B-flat seven. It's the same thing, just moved up to the third fret. Okay? Now... I'm going to do I'm going to go down down and after the first down down I'm going to let off the chord a little bit okay this is a sort of thing that creates swing rhythms it's the sort of thing that creates blues and jazz comping sound and so watch this pay attention to this hand doing what is that hand doing it's lifting off right it's not lifting off entirely it's just letting up an eeny weeny bit okay just enough so that it creates a little bit of a muted sound okay so down down lift off down up down 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 lift off down up down now try that with me okay i'm going to keep it going for a little bit So after down, down, I lift off, and then after down, up, down, I lift off again. Okay, try with me. Can you open a window? say about this is that this is what you want to do with movable or inverted chord forms so that um, anything that has a movable chord shape this works really well for okay you're not going to do this on an open C or an open F chord it's the sort of thing you're going to do on a chord that can be moved up and down okay so how would this sound with a song then okay this kind of uh, strum that is illustrating how you need to mute in order to create the sound, a blues and jazz comp, swing, a reggae, calypso, all of these strums require you to lift off a tiny bit, and that creates the muted effect that, that are synonymous with the sound of these styles. So if you're going to do these strums, you are ultimately lifting off a little bit. And yet, here we are again with another example of how the idea of lifting off is so important to what we do. Okay, so uh, I'll give you an example. We did this the other day with the roll class, right? And so my students who have this song might try this. All right, watch. I hate to see. 
see that evening sun go down. I hate to see that evening sun go down. Well, it makes me think about my last go round. See how I'm lifting off in there? Down, down, lift off. Down, up, down, lift off. Okay, so that's another example of it. Um, in reggae, for example, watch reggae. Here, okay, watch reggae. Yes, I have two black labs who uh, you will hear from time to time in these classes, and uh, they are great family dogs, letting us know that somebody's going past the house. Okay, so it's better than an alarm system. All right, so. Of the reggae strum. Watch this now, okay? Watch this. Watch this hand, okay? Another example. In other words, you're not seeing my hand. Just stay rooted. Which I'm trying to do, and it's hard to do. You're seeing my hand lift off, okay? Little song I wrote, gonna sing it note for note. Don't worry, be happy. See, I'm going down, up, lift off, down, up, lift off, down, up, lift off, down, up, lift off, down, up, lift off. Okay, try that with me. Down, up, lift off, down. So you go down, up. This is reggae now. Those of you who want to play Three Little Birds and don't want to go like this, you want to make it sound like reggae, this is your strum, okay? So watch. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Think of it this way. Down, up, and a breath, a real short breath. Down, up, down, up, down, up. But you got to get the lift off in there. Try it with me now. Here we go. G and A minor. Hear the little song I wrote. I'm gonna sing it note for note. Don't worry. Be happy. Try that again one more time. Here we go. Same thing. Hear the little song I wrote. I'm gonna sing it note for note. Don't worry. Even if you're in self at quarantine. Last time, here we go. Hear the little song I wrote. I'm gonna sing it note for note. Don't worry. Be happy. And this too shall pass. The corona will go away. And you'll get your little rev hug in person. Okay, so is is my point understood about how many strum strums for genres, specific genres, require the lift off in order to give it its sound? And so I want that to be tied up into this lesson tonight. And we got time for one more idea, and then a few closing comments. Okay, so now what I'd like you to do is I would like you to turn to, um, it says, uh, well, page 10. It says, palm muting with a basic bluegrass melody. And this is where I promote, because um, this lesson comes out of this book right here. And this is uh, a book that I wrote on uh, strumming styles, which includes muting and many other things like triplets and roll strokes and triple rolls and all kinds of cool stuff that's connected to the ukulele. I love this book, and it was a lot of fun to write through halleonard.com, and uh, it comes with video access. So uh, I'm going to talk to you about how to mute a melody and why there are benefits to it. Okay? So here we go. Um, if you're looking at this page number 10, great. If you're not, it doesn't matter because this melody is so easy, and everybody knows it. Um, it's very easy. Okay? I'm going to tell you by way of where to put your finger on the frets. 
okay? And so if we just play the melody, and I'm using my thumb to pluck downbeats, even if you've never played a melody before, you can do this. So I'm going to go second fret of the A string. It's almost all on the A string. Two, 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 three, three, two, 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 two. open, open. Two, 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 three, 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 two, two, open, open. And then finally we land on the E string, third fret, G note, okay? For all you note readers, I could go B, 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 C, C, B, 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 A, A, B, 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 C, 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 B, B, A, A, G, okay? And so let's try it one more time, and then we're going to learn how to mute this. Okay, one more time now. We're almost ready. Here we go. Two, 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 three, three, two, 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 open, open. Two, 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 three, 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 two, two, open, open, three. Okay, all right. Now, how do you mute a melody, and what are the benefits of it? Okay, this is going to be the last thing we do here, okay? We're going to take our palm, or think of this as a karate chop. Like if I'm breaking board, they go, ah, right? And so I'm going to take that part of my hand, and I'm going to rest it um, right above the bridge, above it, okay? So somewhere right in here. And I'm going to just rest it right there so that it rests on the strings. And then I'm going to take my thumb, and I'm going to try to pluck those strings while my hand is resting, on the string. So again, this part of your hand is going to rest and lay down right above the bridge. I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to move it up to the second fret of the A string. Watch what happens. Sometimes when the strings are ringing out and you're strumming really fast and you want to play a melody, it's really cool and an awfully good idea to start out with a muted uh, sound or a muted uh, variation on the melody and then go into playing the regular melody. Let me demonstrate. Here's the chords to boil them cabbage down. Watch what happens. Say I'm strumming this and I want to go from strumming to melody which is what throws a lot of people off. Boil them cabbage down, boys. Break that whole cake brown, boys. Only song that I can sing. Boil them cabbage down. Now watch. By going right down immediately and putting my hand there, it stops the strings from ringing out. And in some ways, I feel, it gives me a lot more control, I'm not going right to try and get a melody with a whole bunch of other open strings down, bouncing around, and, and it just feels kind of cluttered and clumsy. But when you mute, it feels like you get control right away. And so let's try it one last time to close the uh, class for tonight. Flush part of the, of the palm right here on the side. Rest it in front of the bridge. Here we go. One, two, three. Four, two, 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 three, three, two, 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 open, open, two, 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 three, 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 two, two, open, open, three. Okay, there it is. All right. Um, so I hope that this gave you a little bit of a more of an appreciation for some of the ways in which damping, chunking, and muting can color your playing. And um, this is a, a lifelong endeavor. If you got one thing tonight that you can use and your time was well spent, and I thank you guys for tuning in from all over North America. Um, as I said earlier, I'm attempting to make my living from my kitchen in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And uh, I'm very grateful for each and every one of you for tuning in. I thank you all for uh, the tips you've sent. And these classes are sponsored by Mead Library. Your tips uh, help bring it up to a level where if I was out on the road and I was getting 20 or 30 bucks a head, 
it makes it worth my while, my while uh, to do it. So I do appreciate that. You can see behind uh, behind me the uh, uh, PayPal, Mark Robinson, LilRev, LilRev.com, and the Venmo. Or if you're just old school and you don't like online stuff, um, message me through my website or Facebook, and I'll give you my address. Uh, and um, uh, if you want to just, you know, pop a check or something like that, um, I do appreciate it. We're all going to get through it. How long this lasts, I'm not sure, but uh, um, I love teaching, and I'm glad that you guys um, decided to spend some time with me tonight. My only request for you is that you practice and that you try to do what you can to stay healthy and uh, uh, so we can all meet up again. I have already lost a couple of students across the country, and uh, um, I don't want to lose any more, okay? So uh, take care of yourselves. And again, the music shouldn't be hard to find for the next class. Go to my website, lilrev.com. Scroll down, you'll see a little brown box that says Sheboygan U Club. Click on it, and that will take you to the Google Drive and uh, the music, whatever the title of the class is, okay? So here are some of the upcoming classes. Uh, we've got Boodle Lamb Shake, which is a jug band classic coming up. That's a great little catchy little tune, right? teaching that really cool 1920s jazz and blues era song in the next class. I got the ukulele slide, teaching you how to slur and slide to add propulsion momentum to your strumming. Get that kind of a thing going. I've got a finger picking class coming up on the 20th and uh, the pendulum stroke now, Mariella, run in the middle room and grab one of my other ukuleles for me, one of the small ones. Hey, yeah. Okay. All right. I'll demonstrate that. I've got a class on Boogie Woogie coming up. So we're going to do a little bit of that, as well as the blues stroke and the rock stroke. Uh, so all this stuff is coming up. Thank you, and thanks to Mead. And... Uh, um, Thank you, Mariella. I'll show you a little bit of the pendulum now. Uh, we're going to do grandfather's clock on the 23rd, and I'm going to teach you all how to get this. Okay. The tick-tock, tick-tock part of grandfather's clock, which is a showstopper and a vaudeville classic. And then um, lastly, I have a Mountain Dulcimer concert from my Facebook page this Saturday at 2 o'clock Central Time. Uh, uh, tune in for that. A lot of good music. Next Wednesday, Claw Hammer Ukulele. So if you're interested in learning about, this is a concert, but I'm going to be talking about Claw Hammer Ukulele, all kinds of different tunes in that show. Uh, and a bunch of other things that you can find out more about on my Facebook page. I'm going to leave it right there. Again, I thank Mead Public Library in Sheboygan, the best library in America. Okay. Thank you all for being with me tonight. Uh, visit me at littlerev.com. I got about 15 albums on the market, and uh, half a dozen of them are ukulele albums. And uh, so this is how you can support me during this time. I thank you so much. Take care.